about Mr. Farrell? Can you, can, can, can you let my people go? And Pharaoh looks at him like it's some kind of joke. <laughs> you and who else? Uh, 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 me me? And, and, and the great I am. And the Bible says that God changed the heart of Pharaoh. And he let the people go. Amen. One man. One simple man was able to touch the heart of a king, of a pharaoh. I, think about this with me. This is slave labor. This is what he used to build his kingdom. Millions of, of, of Jewish people. And he says, okay, let them free. One man able to change nations. The Bible tells us about this little Jewish girl. There's a decree to kill all the Jews. And they're about to die. Mordecai begins to, to beg her, hey, listen, I need you to go talk to the king. You know, she had forgotten a little bit. You know, she needed, she needed a friend's help. She forgot. Oh, no, pobrecitos. All the Jews are going to die. She says, Esther, you're Jewish too. You're going to die too. You need to talk to the king. So they begin to pray and fast. And one little girl, one little girl went in, spoke to the king, and she could have died. The Bible says that, that she, she said, you know what, if I die, I die. And she stood up before the king and said, spare my people. And the Bible says the king granted to her. But she spoke and she saved the whole Jewish nation. Amen. One girl was able to change the heart and the laws of the kingdom. We got the story of some teenagers. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, Daniel, they, they, these were all young boys. How many know teenagers have a destiny and a future? You know, I've built all my churches with teenagers or young people because God will use us or use you. These young men were, the Bible says they were separated unto God. I mean, they wouldn't even eat the food that was offered to them because they wanted to be different. How I many know it, it takes us to be different and be separate from the world? We can't be playing around with sin if you want to ever change the world. And these young men, they stood up, amen, and they made a difference. Uh, the Bible says that they, 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 they were so different than everyone else, amen, that the, the, the laws of the kingdom were coming against them. But then you find in Daniel 6, 25, then King Darius wrote to all the peoples, nations, and men of every language throughout the land, may you prosper greatly. In verse 26, I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. I issue a decree. He, he, he calls the king because of his lifestyle, because of his prayer habits, because of his devotion and, and his stance. He caused the kings to change the laws. Listen, church. The Bible is full of men that are Nation changers. Nehemiah. Think about me, with me. Here's Nehemiah. His people are destroyed. And he begins to inquire of the king. That he wants to go. And rebuild his nation. And the king's like. Well, well how long are you going to be there? Man? How, how many weeks you want off? He says it'll be a little while. All right. Well you can go. Um, and by the way, can you, can you write, give me some notes saying that I can go there and, and nobody's going to mess with me? All right. Oh, by the way, I'm going to need some money. Can I get some money so I can do this? Okay. May the Lord grant whatever you want. And he gave him everything. 
Listen. The prince was an enemy of the Jews. But he gave him everything because Nehemiah was able to sway the heart of the king. He changed the laws. He got money from an enemy nation to rebuild his nation. Amen? Let me tell you something. Can I tell you that we're a fellowship of nation changers? Did you know that? We're, we're not just playing church. We're, we're out there changing the world. We're out there doing incredible things. We had a man, a short little white man, skinny, with green beady eyes, said, I want to win the world for Jesus. From a little country town, whoever's been there, man, you, you, every time people go to Prescott and they're like, what is this? But this man says, oh, we're going to change the world. And 3,600 churches later, almost every nation in the world touched by the, his influence were changing the world. There's more men uh, like uh, Alvin Smith who changed Sierra Leone. Men like uh, Mark Austin who changed the Philippines. Uh, 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 um, um, Joe Campbell who went to Malaysia and changed that nation. Listen, we are a fellowship of nation changers. We're simple people who believe in their God and are able to step into destiny and, and what God has called us to. You know, this Russian went into Cuba <laughs> with some audacity. And he said, Alex, God's going to change the laws of this nation so that we can advance the kingdom. It wasn't for him. It was so we can advance the kingdom. He says, this guy's out of his mind. And what happened? They threw that guy in jail. <laughs> he did. He went to jail for a year. He, but they told him what a lot of people don't know. When they threw him to jail, they set him up because he was starting to have influence. And what happened was they set him up. He, someone jumped in front of his car, and uh, he told me before I went, make sure if you get a car, get a dash cam. He said someone jumped in front of his car, and then they said he killed him. When nobody ever knew who that person was or if he died or not. But that's what they said, so they accused him of murdering somebody. And he says, look, if you, if you confess you're guilty, we'll put you on a plane and send you back to Russia. And he says, No says, if not, you're going to be in jail here in Cuba. And he says, I'd rather fight for what's right. I'm not going to leave my church. It was a baby church just starting. And so they threw him in jail. And while in jail, he begins to pray. He begins to get a hold of God. There's no uh, freedoms. Uh, the jails, uh, I don't know how the jails are in, 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 uh, in, in uh, England, but in America, the jails are, you know, they're, they're, they're like, you know, resorts sometimes. But in Cuba, the jails aren't like that. People are starving outside. Can you imagine inside? And so here this man is in jail and he's praying, getting a hold of God. He's teaching and coaching Alex how to lead the church. The church begins to grow. The church begins to get strong. And they begin to pray. And let me tell you something. God begins to move inside of that jail. They begin to give this man freedoms. They, they let him go on passes on weekends. They don't do that for foreigners. They begin to let him have Bible studies in a jail where it's illegal everywhere else. He begins to, to uh, uh, win people. So because he meets somebody and he meets one of the main generals, he begins to do his garden. He begins to get favors. So finally, the, the general, I don't know what happened. But they passed a law saying that you can, he can go to trial and face. Because over there, you're guilty. That's it. There's no innocent to prove you. You're, you're just guilty. You did it. No, you're guilty. And that's it. So they actually gave him a hearing. But in that hearing, they still deported him. But that was a year later. 
But what happened was his, his church caught on fire. His church exploded. And they began to preach the gospel. When he left, he had a, a vehicle. Vehicles, and sometimes it's hard to understand this, but because here we have vehicles everywhere. But in Cuba, a vehicle is, is a luxury. Not everybody has them. Not, there's not a lot of vehicles on the street. And, and the vehicles that are, are from 1950s. And so a vehicle is a luxury. And that pastor actually had like a 1990s vehicle. So it was a modern car. And so he told Alex, you can have it. But Cubans aren't allowed to drive those because the, the plate uh, has a certain label and Cubans aren't allowed to drive those. So he says, you know what? God's going to change the law so that you can have this car. Now, in, in, in our minds, we think, well, what does a car have to do with the will of God? You got to understand, you know, there's a reason why in, in, in the book of Acts, the, the, the churches were uh, uh, from house to house because they didn't have transportation. Amen. So in Cuba, we're still in the book of Acts, man. We're having church house to house and we're meeting in people's houses. And so uh, so you can't really travel. You can't have influence in a lot of places. And so, you know, th th this vehicle was very important. So they began to pray, and he said, and he told Alex, do you believe God's going to change the law? Alex says, yes, sir. He says, I want you to go down to the station and ask if they've changed the law. So that's called taking a step of faith. Amen? So Alex went with his wife to ask if they had changed any laws to where he can transfer the title, and they laughed at him. He told me they laughed at us, Angel. A couple weeks later, he asked him, you need to go again. So he goes again, and they laughed him out of the office again. A couple weeks later, they show up, and it's like a circus in there. Ain't no laws going to change here. Two weeks later, go again. And they show up, and everybody looks at him in disbelief. A new law just passed saying that you can transfer title. I mean, they couldn't believe it themselves. That's never happened. So they're able to ha get the car. Now, the important thing about the gospel in a vehicle was that he found out that he had uh, a family member in jail. So he went to visit him. He prayed with him. He gets saved in the jail. He traveled about an hour. He comes back and they, they call him saying, you know what, the, the, your family uh, down south, uh, uh, they, they heard about, they want you to go talk to him. So he drove an hour down south and he started preaching to his family. They all got saved. Then he started having Bible studies there. Then there were more family, but there was an, an, another hour away. And so he went over there, started another Bible study. So now he has his own church, but he has Bible studies in different cities. People are getting saved. So that car was very important for the gospel. You know, how many know we, we're into church planting? Amen? We believe in planting churches. But how many know they cost money? How many know we don't just say, bang, good luck, see you later? How many know we invest, we get them buildings, we get them equipment, we get them whatever they need, Right? And then we invest with revivals and different things and teams. And we invest money and it costs money. Listen, Cuban people, doctors, lawyers, trash collectors, they all make $28 a month. I want that to sink in. You guys want socialism? That's what you'll get. Equality. Everybody making 28 bucks a month. How many know that we can't plant churches if you're making 28 bucks? Amen? That's all they can do. But then all of a sudden, a law passed in Cuba saying that Cubans could start certain businesses. For the very first time in 60 years, they were able to start a business. And the church began to get money. Amen? The church began to gather finances. I'm going to preach about that tomorrow as well they began to get finances and guess what 
They started planting churches into those cities where that car was able to take them to. Amen? You know, I showed up right before they were planting churches. I went down there to preach a, a, a revival. I shared my testimony. And, and we, as we were in song service, let me tell you something. You know, there's something powerful about song service, church. You know, in Cuba, Cubans are, 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 are oppressed and, and, and they have no freedoms or rights. But when they worship, man, they're free. And I went into that song service. Let me tell you, the, the spirit of God came upon me. I was, my wife, I took my wife, we're in there, we're seeing the worst nation I've ever seen in my life. The, the, the poverty, the destruction, I mean, and, 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 and man, we entered into heaven on earth in the song service. And God spoke to me, he said, I want you to come to this nation. I went up to my pastor after that, I told my wife, you want to go? I said, we're going. I told my pastor, pastor, it was conference time. I says, pastor, he looked at me, he says, what do you want to do? I said, I want to go to Cuba. He said, how are you going to get in? I said, pastor, just send me. I'll figure that out later. So he announced us to go to Cuba. You got to understand the relationship between America and Cuba. How many heard of the Cuban Missile Crisis? They've been at war for since, since then. So Americans were not allowed to go to Cuba. I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm believing God. I'm saying, God, you've got to do something. You've got to do something. And one day, I'm studying and I come across an article, new law passed in Cuba for foreigners that want to live there. And they passed the law where if you want to live there, all you have to do is rent a building from a government. Pay What they're saying is you just pay American dollars and you can go move in. And I was able to enter that nation. Amen. One day. Five years, God's going to change the laws in this country so we can advance the kingdom of God. 2017, we entered that island. We began to preach the gospel. We partnered with Alex and that other church. We began a move of God in that island. Listen. Christianity was illegal. I couldn't have church. I couldn't witness. I couldn't outreach. Couldn't have a building. But I mean, no, we serve a big God. We serve a God that'll move upon a person's heart and desire. And this is what we've been able to do in Cuba. You can show the pictures. We now have, Alex has five churches in Cuba. Our church was, was able to go in. Can you start the pictures? Our church was able to, we were able to go in. And in about two and a half years, God raised up a powerful church. I was able to plant my first worker out. In two and a half years, I ended up not being able to go back to Cuba. So my guy took over my church. I, when I went back a, almost eight months later, the church was doing so well that we just planted our second church. And they're cranky. They won't go. I wanted to show you. We never got a church building. The whole time I was there, we didn't have a church building. I met in somebody's backyard or front yard, actually. And let me tell you something. God moves because people will rise up. God moves because people care. And people are willing to say, you know what, Lord? Here I am. Well, that's the last one I was going to show you so you guys come on invasion team. But go to the other one. 
in a nation where it's illegal to preach the gospel. We're outside doing outdoor concerts, preaching, and Americans standing up, screaming. Go ahead. That was a church that I left. There's a house on the left, the pink one, and there's a house on the right, the blue one. All I did was put a roof and put a floor, and we had church, man. And we had a blast. There's our people. That's another outdoor concert. We have an incredible band. As a matter of fact, we have our own CD. We, we record it. And, the, and that's another picture of the church. Listen, church. That is what God can do if you just rise up. The Bible says, I give you the nations as your inheritance. Just ask of me. Just ask of me. You know, you can go ahead and close it. You know, I, I'm a very good businessman. I'm, I'm very good. I, I, I can start businesses everywhere I go. And in 2014, I came back to evangelize, and I started some businesses, and I do well. Everywhere I go, I do well. And as I'm evangelizing, I, I started some businesses, and, you know, and, and, and immediately I, I do good. I had not only my, my own, my, the, my first business, but I had little businesses out, outside of that, was doing well financially. But I went to Cuba, I said, you know what? I'm a nation changer, man. I'm not a businessman. God's called me to win the world. I don't know about you. But I don't want to be a king's cup bearer, man. We need them. I'll preach about that tomorrow. I want to be a nation changer. Listen, there's some of you in this place. God's called you. God's called you to change nations, man. Don't, don't settle for parliament. Don't settle for, for whatever this world has to offer. Being a king's, king's cupbearer. God has called us to win the world for Jesus and change the nations. Let's bow our head. Every head bowed and every eye closed in reverence to God. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I believe that God's called people here. I believe that God has saved some of you and has placed a seed of destiny in your heart. You don't know where you're going to give yourself to that. There's no telling what God can do through your life. What nation you'll change. Perhaps you're even just saved. And there's a, there's a tugging in your heart. I was saved three weeks and God planted that seed of destiny in my life. I didn't know the Bible. I didn't know anything about Christianity. I didn't know what to do. All I said was, Lord, here I am. And God's pulling on some of you, speaking to you right now. Right now, God's speaking to, to, some, of you, to some of you couples, young ladies. You're saying, I'm going to consecrate my life. And I'm going to marry a man of God, and I'm going to go with him, and we're going to reach the world. Listen, it takes a couple. I couldn't do it alone if my wife wasn't right alongside with me. And God's speaking to young men, young women couples in this place we're going to be nation changers listen god can use your life all you have to do is surrender tonight surrender it to him and as every head is bowed every eyes closed i'm going to make a call right now for those of you that are called but before i do you're here you're not saved you're not born again listen you're tired of sin you're tired of the effects the destruction and you want a new life. You want forgiveness. You want happiness and peace. You're tired of the chaos sin has brought. And tonight, you're looking for an answer. I'm here to declare to you, Jesus Christ is the answer for you. You're here. You're not saved, not born again, but you want to get right. I want to pray for you. I want to ask God to help you. I came here 31 years, a, 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 a drunk, a drug addict, drug dealing, violent young man. And God forgave me and gave me a brand new life. And if that's you, you're looking for that, that, that answer. I want to pray for you. Quickly, 
Anyone here? You're not saved, not born again, but you want to get right. I want you to do one thing for me. Would you lift up your hand and say, Pastor, will you pray? How many? You let me pray for you and say, God, help this young man. God, God help, help this young woman. How many? You lift up your hand quickly. God sees that hand. You can put it down. God sees these hands up here in the front. You can put them down. Anyone else? You join these on his hearts. God sees that hand. Anyone else? How many? God's speaking to you right now. This is the best day of your life. If you'll receive Christ, I'm, I'm, I guarantee you 31 years later, I don't regret it. How many more? You join these honest hearts quickly. Just lift up your hand. All I want to do is pray for you. We don't want to embarrass you. We're not asking you to join this church. All we want to do is pray. Ask God to help you. God sees that hand in the back. How many more? Quickly. I believe there's more. God sees that hand. You can put it down. How many more? Quickly. We're going to pray for this right now. I'm going to give you one last chance. Lift up your hand. All I want to do is pray quickly. Amen. Okay, I'm going to. Ask these that raise their hands. Would you guys look at me real quick? Would you look at me? I mean, God's going to help you. Why don't you come? Let me pray for you guys. Just come. Don't worry about it, man. I did that 30 years ago. Best decision I ever made, man. God changed my life. Brother, you lifted up your hand. I mean, what's your name? Nathaniel. God's going to help you, brother. These guys are going to pray for you. God bless you, my brother. What's your name? Bless you. Bless you. God bless you. There was a few more that lifted up their hands. If you'll come, let me pray for you. God will help you couple more lifted up their hands. You come. If you ushers, you saw them, uh, help them out. Help them come over here and pray. Amen. I want to make another appeal. There's people here. Listen, God has called you to preach. God has placed nations and cities in your heart. And as every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Young ladies here, God is dealing with you, speaking to you to live a consecrated life. And that God will use you. And you want to be used of God. You want to go before God saying, you know what, Lord, here I am. Send me. If that's you, I want you to lift up your hand real quick. You can put it right back down quickly. Lift up your hand. Amen. God, you can put it right back down. Lift up your hand and put it down. Lift up your hand and put it down. God's calling you. God's speaking to your heart, placing a seat of destiny. Listen. Go on record saying, you know what, I'm going to answer the call. Here I am, Lord. Send me. How many more? You lift up your hand quickly. Amen. There's people in this place. God's dealing with you, speaking nations. Amen. Let's all stand. These altars are open. You come. You get a hold of God. Amen. And let God begin that work in your heart. Amen. Begin to just burn and with a passion inside of you. Amen. And, and, and let Him do whatever He wants. Amen. You surrender to this call. Surrender to what God wants to do in your life. Hallelujah. Let's sing a song in this place. Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. Defender behind me. Gives me 
God praise in this place church why don't you clap your hands God worship his name in this place father we love you and exalt you God we glorify you and magnify you Lord in Jesus mighty name hallelujah men simple people listen we are a fellowship of simple people accomplishing amazing works that's who we are and that is our heritage you know, the first time I laid hands, laid eyes on Pastor Mitchell, I had heard stories about Pastor Mitchell. And, and, and in my eyes, I thought this guy was going to walk in. He was going to be like six foot five, 250 pounds, monster. The stories I've heard of what he had done and what he was doing and the men that he was leading. I said, this guy is a giant. And I remember the first time I saw him, he walked in, this short, little skinny white man, simple, country bumpkin. Walked in, and I said, that's Pastor Mitchell. But God spoke to me and says, yeah, that's who he is. That's what I'm using. He says, same way I can use you. I says, Lord, here I am. I didn't know how to can't sing I can't play music didn't know my Bible I says Lord okay you're call you you're the one that called me here I am let me tell you something I've been able to go to California to Florida raised up churches Mexico Puerto Rico and Havana and I'm just getting started And you know what? If God can use me, you guys are way more talented than I am. God will certainly use you. But you got to consecrate your life. Daniel lived a consecrated life, man. As a young man. You got to get in prayer. Listen, pioneer pastors in this place, you, you, you better pray. Not just when you're pastors, see, you better have a prayer life. Everything we saw in Havana, Cuba, was supernatural, born in prayer. Not one ounce of my, my, my experience, my ability, not one ounce. I, I guarantee you, it was all born in prayer, all supernatural. And that's what we want. That's the kind of church we want. And let me tell you something. All you have to do is care and believe. And we'll win the world. Listen, church. There's so much potential in this place. It's oozing with what we can do. And I know your pastor's heart is to send churches. Send them to the nations. You know what? And if you'll get behind them, if you'll give yourself to it, you can touch the world for Jesus. Tomorrow, Paul says, how will they preach unless they are sent? Amen. Today, we need the guys that want to go. Tomorrow, I'm going to preach about those that are going to send. Listen, we need money. I'm going to tell you supernatural miracles of what God has done in Cuba, in the El Paso church. How we're able, the El Paso church is planting churches internationally and it costs money that you can't even imagine. 
But how many know that God has money for his people? And we're going to tap into that. Hopefully tomorrow I can help you tap into the power to create wealth. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's give God praise as your pastor comes. Oh, hallelujah. 
you do for God, whatever he calls you to do, you'll never be alone. He'll always walk with you. You know, as Pastor Ortiz said, you know, you can look at all the mechanics, but you know, it's only when you step out. That's what faith is. Just stepping out. You know, we there's a book, the title, a guy called John Ottersberg, great book, and he said these words, it's called, if you want to walk on the water, step out the boat, you'll never accomplish anything unless you step out, and when you go through the scriptures, just mankind, not Christian, but just mankind, the Bible says his eyes go to and fro across the face of the earth looking for those who would believe in him. Not just looking for those who would say, hey, just looking for those who would say, you know what, I am going to believe in you. I'm going to believe for the impossible, the things I am not able to do. You'll often hear many preachers look at themselves and say, man, this man is better people. Because we do believe that. And God looks for those who just say, you know what? Would you trust me? Would you believe in me? And that could be in anything. That could be in your job. It could be in your, in your uh, relationships. Anything. Just God, I'm going to trust you that right will come out right. You'll help me. And if you'll just step out many times, you're not even too sure about Christ. You're Maybe you're here and you're not a Christian. You maybe just believe that there's a God. But may I push you a little bit further? Will you step out and say, God, you know, I don't know. I've been driving this and riding this car, but go before me. I'm going to trust you tonight. I'm going to believe you. He who goes out upon great water, upon the waters, the Bible says the Psalms, he will do great things. If you go out, just venture out. You'll do great things. God will help you. You just got to trust him. Amen. Amen. We're going to close our service. Amen. And uh, we want to close it in a word of prayer. We thank God. Tomorrow, final night uh, with Pastor Ortiz. Amen. And uh, I really just strongly would like to encourage you tonight to, for tomorrow to come out.
let's pray. This is a hospital. That's what we do. We pray. Amen. We're going to pray and we're going to believe God. Amen. You know, Pastor Ortiz said a word last night. And he says, you know, our prayers should light up heaven. Amen. And we're going to pray. Amen. We're going to pray for, for this lady's son. We're going to believe God for a miracle in God's hands. Would you stretch your hands out before? Come on, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Come on, church. Let's lift our voices and let's pray. Father, by your grace, God, Father, I'm asking you grace. Father, for her son, God.